So my name is Dan Wagner. I'm the assistant district attorney that is in charge of the homicide unit in the Orange County District Attorney's Office. Um, as part of my duties there, we've had the Kenneth Clare case come back into litigation. Linda Rogers was a 25-year-old um, single mom. She had a six-year-old daughter that lived with her. She, lived, she and her daughter lived with a family named the Henriksons. The Henriksons had four children that Linda uh, took care of. She was sort of a live-in nanny. What was Linda like? Linda was kind and sweet. She liked to help people and she loved children. She loved children. Uh, she was sweet, she was kind, she was loving. Uh, she would do, you know, whatever she could. If you were in trouble, right, she would help you any way she could. I was crying and I had ran and hidden in the closet bedroom, the girl's bedroom, and she came in, and she found me, and I was crying, and I said, and she said, what's the matter, baby? And I just told her that I wanted to go home. She said, well, where's home? She said, you are home. You're with me. And I said, I want to go where Grandma is. I want us to go where Grandma is. Um, it was November 15th, 1984, and uh, Peggy and Kai had gone out, and she put us to bed, and then I remember Peggy came in and woke me up, and took me to the living, took me and the other two girls to the living room, the boys were already in there, I think, I don't remember. And then there were a lot of police and Peggy told me that my mom died. I had to grow up without a mother. I got to go live with my grandmother though. That was good. It devastated her to lose her child. I can only imagine. Like, I have children. I can't imagine losing one of my kids. Um, she, she made it through it, though, because she had me. And she used to tell me that all the time. That she didn't think that she would have been able to make it through it if she didn't have me. Well, it's all over the internet. If you just Google his name, the petition is there. It makes me feel disgusted. It makes me feel like none of these people think that my mother's life mattered, that my life didn't matter, that I got to grow up without a mom and she got to die and it didn't matter. But it matters. <laughs> It matters to me, it matters to my whole family. It matters to everybody who knows me. It matters to my husband, it matters to my children who don't have a grandmother. I think that they don't know what they don't know. They've only got what they've been fed by the CJ Ford company, all right? And it's just little bits of pieces, all right? But it's not the whole story. My sister was the victim of violence, all right? A murder, an unnecessary murder. Her life was cut short. She was taken from her family, a family that loved her and, uh, and children that loved her. And she never got to see her grandchildren or any of her other uh, nieces and nephews grow up and, and be a part of our life. It's just gone, you know, it's a part of you that's gone that cannot be replaced. It won't, it won't come back, right? So you learn to uh, live with it. Uh, you learn to accept it, right? But at certain times of the year, you get, you know, depressed, for example, she's murdered on the 15th of November. That's a week before Thanksgiving. So each year when we have Thanksgiving, we kind of get a little depressed that time of the year because uh, she's not there to, to be with us. That I got to grow up without a mom. And I didn't, and she didn't deserve to die. I mean, she was 25 years old. She was young. She had a whole life ahead of her. 
I'm 38 now. She's been gone longer than she was alive. But she didn't, I don't care what kind of situation she was in. Nobody had the right to take her life. <laughs>